क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द कंपाउंड्स ऑफ हाइड्रोजन एंड दोस वेयर वाटर आइस एंड नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट दैट इज H2O2 बेसिकली हाइड्रोजन परऑक्साइड so how basically h2o2 can be prepared and what are the different uh, basically properties of h2o2 and that is what we are going to discuss about here so let me talk about that so talking about hydrogen peroxide basically we know that is uh, the formula or the chemical formula that we could represent uh, the hydrogen peroxide is h2o2 so this is nothing but this is a molecule which consists of one oxygen extra and that's the reason when it comes to the structure of molecule that is h2o so that's the reason that uh, h2o2 or basically hydrogen peroxide is also known as oxygenated water so we know that a uh, water is basically h2o but suppose if we have oxygenated it so therefore it will become h2o2 and that's it is what uh, the other name of hydrogen peroxide is oxygenated water so this was related to hydrogen peroxide and obviously it will have uh, a different structure compared to that of uh, the water but uh, talking about the structure of water this is what we are going to discuss about in the next topic but let me discuss about that uh, how uh, basically the h2o2 can be prepared so this is the main thing that i am going to talk about in this topic so now let us discuss about the preparations of h2o2 so there are various methods to prepare h2o2 that is uh, hydrogen peroxide so one of those uh, i'm going to talk about here and this is the thing that i'm going to talk about each of it or each method point wise so let me talk about the first point and that is basically the lab method means how can we prepare uh, h2o2 in laboratory so reactant that we need is basically bao2 basically it is known as barium peroxide but this bao2 should not be that is anhydrous it should be hydrated so that's the reason that we are using bao2 in presence of that is the crystal of that, that consists of eight moles of h2o so therefore this is known as barium peroxide which is basically in a hydrated form so this is basically treated with h2so4 so when our barium oxide or barium peroxide is been treated with h2so4 then the product that we could get is basically barium sulfate that is baso4 along with that of that is h2o2 and with that of that is since uh, we have used uh, h2so4 which is basically known as rehydrating agent so that's the reason that uh, h2so4 will be able to remove uh, most of the water molecules so in this case basically the water molecule is also being removed in the form of h2o so in this case basically what we have got if we have got that is bs4 and uh, along with that of h2o2 and uh, that is eight moles of uh, h2o but since we have got h2o2 that is in a very small amount so that's the reason it is known as a lab method where we are not uh, synthesizing h2o2 in a huge mass but for example it is fine to understand that basically how basically we could obtain h2o2 so in this case basically uh, as i have mentioned earlier that we have to use uh, a hydrated barium peroxide the reason behind that is suppose if we are using uh, and it has be able to then uh, because of we know that h2o4 is a way, basically dehydrating agent and suppose at any how get baso4 but the thing is this baso4 which is basically a, a precipitate basically it will cover the bao2 and since uh, it will we see add a protective layer on bao2 that's the reason that the remaining bao2 which has not been reacted with h2o4 even that won't be reacted with h2o4 so as to get a uh, product that is h2o2 so thereby we see uh, the anhydrous bao2 will retard the reaction or it will slow down the reaction and that is what uh, we see we are using hydrated bao2 and this is what i want to talk about and that is for we have obtained h2o2 basically hydrogen peroxide so this was one of the method and now let me talk about the other method also so the other method is basically known as merck's method and what is that let me discuss about this thing so in that case basically we are using a uh, sodium peroxide that is uh, na2o2 and that is basically it is again it is treated with the similarly that we have treated that is a barium peroxide with h2so4 so here also we are treating with uh, h2so4 so in this case basically we could get uh, the salt that is uh, na2so4 that is uh, sodium sulfate along with that of the product that we need is basically h2o2 so this is our main concern and this is how we could get uh, that is h2o2 from merck's method so this was the second method where we could obtain h2o2 and there are also various other methods let me discuss about that also so the other uh, possibility where we could uh, obtain uh, that is h2o2 is from uh, using phosphoric acid also and uh, and with the help of that is barium peroxide so the third that i am going to talk about is we can 
prepare that is or we can synthesize H2O2 with the help of phosphoric acid. So as I've mentioned earlier that is what we have to do is we have to include that is the barium peroxide along with that of uh, the phosphoric acid and phosphoric acid is nothing but H3PO4. So in this reaction basically we have to go through the stoichiometry and we have to balance the reaction and then only we could get uh, the possible or the desired product that we need that is H2O2. So in this case basically 3 moles of uh, BO2 is been, uh, is been reacted with that is uh, H3PO4 that is phosphoric acid so as to obtain that is Ba thrice PO4 and uh, that is basically twice and uh, for that we have to basically uh, balance this also and this is basically the uh, precipitate that we could get and the remaining byproduct is basically 3 moles of H2O2. So this is our desired product that we have got over here by using phosphoric acid and this is a very simple reaction that is we have to add that is BaO2 that is barium peroxide in uh, H3PO4 and the product that we could get is basically 3 moles of H2O2 and that is basically the byproduct but uh, this uh, thing that is barium phosphate it will be the form of uh, precipitate and that is how basically we could easily separate H2O2. So this was the third method and now let me uh, discuss about uh, the next and that is from paste of BaO2. So what is paste of BO2? It is nothing but it is uh, basically a thin layer that has been uh, obtained whenever a BO2 is been uh, dissolved in uh, that is uh, ice water. So in this case basically the reaction that I am going to talk about is we have to bubble that is carbon dioxide in the thin layer of BO2 which is basically dissolved in the ice water. So therefore thin layer or a kind of paste of BO2 will be formed. So therefore a BAO2 along with that of that is H2. And this H2 is uh, ice cold water and along with that of suppose if we have bubbled out uh, if we have bubbled that is carbon dioxide and the product that we could obtain is basically BaCO3 along with that of uh, H2O2 and in this case basically barium carbonate is basically it is the one which is not soluble in water and that's the reason that it will precipitate and uh, that is how basically we could get H2O2. So this were the uh, methods that I have discussed uh, where we could obtain H2O2 in lab also or else uh, uh, with various other reactions. But now let me discuss about that how can we obtain H2O2 in industry uh, or uh, in a commercial basis. So that is the main thing I want to talk about. So let me discuss about that also. So we can uh, prepare H2O2 uh, that is hydrogen peroxide in uh, uh, large amount also that is uh, we can prepare uh, in industrial method or commercial method also and that is how uh, we could obtain H2O2 with the help of that is 2 ethyl uh, anthroquinone and uh, that is what I want to talk about over here that is if you talk about the structure of uh, anthroquinone and uh, basically 2 ethyl anthroquinone then the structure is as follows it is basically an aromatic ring that I am discussing or I am mentioning over here in this manner where this is anthroquinone but on the second position that is if this is carbon number one this is carbon number two so therefore a ethyl group is been attached to it so therefore this is attached on the second position so that's the reason that the name is 2 ethyl anthroquinone or quinone we uh, we pronounce it that way also so the thing is uh, we can we have to prepare that is h2o2 and that also in a large amount so that's the reason that uh, this is been treated with oxygen so whenever it has been treated with oxygen but it is a reversible process and in that case basically the overall structure that we have got over here it will change into anthroquinone and that is what uh, the structure is what i'm measuring over here while this name that is ol it uh, the suffix ol it is because of the presence of the alcoholic that is oh group while in this case basically the oxidation has taken place over here and there how we could find that this oh is been converted into a ketonic group that is carbonyl group that is c double bond o and that's the that's the reason the name is basically 2 ethyl anthroquinone along with that the byproduct that we could obtain is h2 and O2. So this is our main uh, desired product that we needed. And uh, but this reaction, as I have mentioned earlier, that is it is reversible. So that's the reason that uh, uh, with the help of H2 and with the help of the catalyst like palladium, it can be reversed back to that is 2 ethyl uh, anthroquinone. So that's it. This is what I want to talk about, and this were the other various methods to prepare H2O2. But let me give a, a brief idea that uh, this H2O2 is actually very reactive. 
uh, in presence of sunlight. That's the reason that this H2O2 can decompose easily so as to obtain H2O as well as oxygen. So that's the reason H2O2 is being placed in such a container. It should be plastic or it should be made up of Teflon so that uh, and uh, this container should be placed in the dark so that uh, the reaction doesn't occur and the decomposition of uh, H2O2 should be avoided. So in this case, basically, we also add a few amount of uh, phosphoric acid as a stabilizer also so uh, that it should not get decomposed. So that's it that is what i want to talk about so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood uh, various methods to prepare h2o2 and that's it and i hope you'll share this video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much